Chapter Twelve: Personality Disorders. This is my summary of Barlow and Duran's Abnormal Psychology textbook, the Seventh Edition,、uh, an integrative approach. So, to begin with, personality disorders are persistent patterns of emotions, cognitions, and behaviors that result in enduring emotional distress,、uh, which causes difficulties in work and relationships. The dimensional model is about whether personality disorders are extreme versions of normal personality variations. So, in a way, if you look at a normal distribution, the dimensional model would be、um, trying to see whether individuals conform to that bell curve to the normal distribution, or if they、uh, deviate from that. They、uh, More on the extremities, on the tails of the distribution. Next, there is the categorical model, which are ways of relating that are different from psychologically healthy behavior. The categorizing, however, may be biased according to Wegia and Spitzer in 1991, because it could be dependent on what cultures define as normal or abnormal, and as you know, different cultures see. Uh, define normality differently. Moving along, I'll be talking about different clusters of personality disorders. There are cluster A personality disorders, which include paranoia, schizoid, and schizotypal, which all share psychotic symptoms, and these are typically seen in schizophrenia.、Uh, individuals are seen as odd or eccentric. So I'll elaborate more on these. The paranoid personality disorder is a pervasive distrust and suspiciousness of others, causing them to interpret their motives as、uh, malevolent, even without justification. So yeah, as in individuals who are paranoid, seeing other people as hostile towards them. Let's say. Next, there is the schizoid personality disorder. Which is a pattern of detachment from social relationships, and it has limited range of emotions in interpersonal situations. The individual often seems aloof, cold, and indifferent to others, so they appear very、um, detached. The schizotypal personality disorder are when individuals are socially isolated and behave unusually compared to others. Causing them to become suspicious,、um, as in causing others to be suspicious of this individual. Schizotypal individuals have odd beliefs and are considered on a continuum. As in, on one side of the continuum, a person would be defined as normal, and then on the other side of the continuum, they would be like completely insane in terms of their beliefs and whatnot. Next, I'll be talking about Cluster B personality disorders. These are when individuals have dramatic emotional or erratic behaviors. For example, antisocial personality disorder are when individuals have a history of failing to comply with social norms, and they perform actions that are deemed inappropriate or unacceptable. Usually, these individuals are deceitful, impulsive, and irresponsible. Psychopathy are、uh, when individuals have superficial charm, grandiose sense of self-worth. They are pathological liars, manipulative, conning individuals who lack remorse and lack empathy. They have observable behaviors like impulsiveness,、uh, repeatedly changing employment, because、uh, there's only so much that normal people could tolerate with these、uh, psychopaths. And、um, for like changing sexual partners, residence, etc. There's also conduct disorder, which is a pervasive pattern of disregard and violation of rights of others occurring before the age of 15. So basically,、um, well, it's kind of similar to psychopathy, but just before 15, and、um, these individuals don't really have any. Concern for others. Childhood onset、uh, of conduct disorder of antisocial behavior. This occurs at least 
at least one of the criterion for antisocial behavior has to be fulfilled before the age of ten. Adolescent onset type is when there's an absence of any criteria characteristic prior to age ten. So、um, prior to age ten, the person would seem normal, but then afterwards, after the age of ten, they would develop antisocial behavior. There's been various theories proposed as to why individuals develop psychopathy or become psychopaths.、Uh, there's the under arousal hypothesis, in which psychopaths have abnormally low levels of cortical arousal, according to Silvers et al. 2009. And、um, as a result of this low level of cortical arousal,、uh, they seek more Risk, risk-taking behavior, risk,、uh, riskful behavior, to、uh, meet that need. The Yerkes-Dodson curve, which is an inverted U shape, states that people with high or low arousal experience negative affect, and they perform poorly in many situations. That is, if you have the right level. Of arousal, so it's not too high or not too low, then you would be able to、um, reach optimal performance on any given task. Let's say, because if there's if the arousal is too low, then it would be too boring for the individual to do. While if the arousal is too high, it will be too challenging. You have to think a lot before、um, you act. Anyway, moving along, there is borderline personality disorder. This is a pervasive pattern of instability of interpersonal relationships,、uh, as well as instability of self-image, which affects one's emotions and、uh, their ability to control impulses. Ways to treat these personality disorders include. Dialectical behavioral therapy, or DPT, they allow for coping of stress that triggers suicidal behavior, whereby, on a weekly basis, individual sessions are held, which provide support, and patients are taught to identify and regulate emotions. There is an element of problem solving, and individuals are taught to trust their own responses. Rather than the validation of others, so instead of going with, let's say, peer pressure, with what other people would、um, state, say whatever, the individuals who suffer from、uh, the aforementioned personality disorders would just understand th- their own position on things and、uh, act accordingly to the problem at hand. Anyway, there's、uh, histrionic personality disorder, which is a pervasive pattern of excessive emotion and attention seeking. There's also narcissistic personality disorder, which is the pervasive pattern of grandiosity in fantasy or behavior, and there's a lack of empathy and the individual seeks admiration. So yeah, this is just textbook narcissism. Furthermore, there are cluster C personality disorders, which include anxious and fearfulness、uh, in individuals. For example, there's avoidant personality disorder, which is the pervasive pattern of social inhibition,、uh, including feelings of inadequacy, hypersensitivity to negative evaluation. This avoidant personality disorder reminds me of、uh, Mary Ainsworth's. The strange situation in which、um, she classified different attachment types in in babies, in infants, and、um, how that there's the secure attached, as well as the anxious ambivalent and anxious avoidant, and、um, I think that this anxious avoidant probably later on manifests. As this avoidant personality disorder, having this、uh, pattern of social inhibition, so shyness, and、um, just being negatively affected by the opinions of others, 
So that, in a way, kind of ties into social phobia or social anxiety disorder. Next, there are dependent personality disorder. It's an excessive need to be taken care of, which leads to submissiveness and clinging behavior. This individual fears separation. So yeah, as stated before, like the、uh, attachment style. This individual is not securely attached, as in the one with the individual with dependent personality disorder. They cling on to、um, their significant other or parent or whatever, and yeah, this has detrimental consequences. Finally, there's obsessive compulsive personality disorder. So、um, this is an enduring pattern of preoccupation with orderliness, perfectionism. Mental and interpersonal control at the expense of flexibility, openness, and efficiency. So these individuals,、um, as mentioned before, have OCD. Okay. So in summary, we looked at personality disorders. We looked at the difference between the two models, like dimensional model and categorical model. We also looked at cluster A personality disorders, such as the paranoid, schizoid, and schizotypal personality disorder types. We also looked at cluster B personality disorders, such as antisocial personality disorder, psychopathy, conduct disorder, childhood onset,、uh, antisocial behavior or conduct disorder, as well as adolescent onset type. We looked at the theory of under arousal hypothesis of the under arousal hypothesis,、uh, the Yerkes-Dodson's curve, borderline personality disorders, as well as the dialectical behavioral therapy and、um, the other types of cluster B disorders, like histrionic personality disorder and. Narcissistic personality disorder. Finally, we also reviewed cluster C personality disorders, such as avoidant personality disorder, dependent personality disorder, and obsessive compulsive personality disorder.、Uh, join me next time, whereby I review schizophrenia spectrum and other psychotic disorders in chapter 13. Thanks for watching. Then it's over.